Today I'm going to show you how to texture paint models in Blender. Super easy, stylistic, let's get to it. Okay, first I'm going to get my reference set up. Uh, this really doesn't matter, uh, it doesn't have to be the exact size, it's just for you to look at and refer to as you work. But that's what we're making today, a blitz ball. Super easy at least in theory. Let's let's see if that's the case. We're just gonna make a UV sphere. And yeah, we'll just leave it with that many subdivisions. Um, shade smooth. It's like six in the morning right now. Or I guess seven in the morning. So yeah, make sure you have a cup of coffee. Okay. Now we're just gonna get these rivets raised and an easy way to do this, so if I grab a vertice and move it, it's gonna do that. Now if you click up here to proportional editing, you'll have this circle and it'll pull everything with it. So uh, if you do that, uh, hitting G and then scrolling the mouse wheel will shrink the area. So the bigger it is, the more it'll pull and the smaller it is, the less it'll pull. The bumps are just all over the place. Uh, so you can make it uniform, you can not, it's totally up to you. Um, so we're, we're, this is more of a learn how to paint than how to model tutorial. So I'm just gonna go through here and quickly select a whole bunch of bumps, random places. You can feel free to be as precise or as lazy with this as you want to be. Just make sure to keep holding shift, otherwise you'll have to reselect all these vertices all over again. Okay, so once you've got all your vertices selected, hit uh, S, and you're gonna scale outwards. Now, if you have it all the way down, it's gonna look like this. Um, if you wanna make a spike ball or a mace, that's an easy way to do it, but for this, we're just gonna scroll it. You wanna create the silhouette, and you'll see what I mean because when you're gonna be doing this type of texture painting, um, it's gonna usually be for more low poly projects. And that's all about saving polygons, which is not what we're doing here, but whatever. So what I mean by silhouette is, see like that's not a good silhouette. Oops. And you know what, this is good enough. And if you're someone who's seeing me do this right now and you go, I can make that better, good. Go make it better. I'm just showing you how to texture paint, like I said. Okay, now uh, we're just gonna do a easy seam down the middle, mark seam, and we're gonna UV unwrap it. So if we go to UV editing with everything selected and then hit unwrap, now we got two circles, yay. Um, I like to, whoops, turn off proportional editing because it also applies there. I like to do my spheres like this. You don't want them touching because uh, things will overlap and your texture will bleed onto the other side, which you do not want. And um, yeah, I mean, I think we're ready to start painting. Now, uh, right now it looks white. But imagine, there, there's no texture on it, so imagine you're going to paint or you're gonna draw, but there's no canvas, there's no paper, there's there's nothing for your medium to go on to. We have to create that first, otherwise you can't texture paint. So like if I go to texture paint right now, whenever you see this color in Blender, that means there's nothing there. So, to do this, go to uh, Material, New, and then uh, under, oh my god, Base Color, image texture and you're gonna create a new one. This can be whatever size you want, I'm just gonna leave it at default, um, but keep that in mind. So even if you're doing like a, a 256 by 256 texture, keep it big and then shrink it later, unless you don't have Photoshop or some editing software, which you should, there's GIMP, there's a lot of free options, but the reason I say that is because you can paint all that detail and then shrink it down versus trying to squeeze that detail in. It's gonna be really low resolution. Just make it big first and then chop it down, trust me. Okay, so we're just gonna, oops, we're gonna call it um, Blitzball. 
and hit OK. So now we've got a texture. So if I go to Texture Paint tab, now you can see it's not purple, which is great. However, turn the specular down because you don't want it to be shiny because it can kind of distort what you're doing and be confusing. Now, very, very, very important thing because I recorded a whole separate tutorial on how to re redo it. Um, when you're texture painting, this is not saved anywhere. Um, so if I'm, I'm in here and I'm doing this, da 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 da, if I go and click on other things and start doing other things in Blender, it will delete this. And when you spend 20 minutes texture painting something and then it's just gone and you have to start all over, it's very frustrating. So please, when you're texture painting, don't do anything else in Blender. And if you need to pause or you want to save your progress, go up here to image and then save. And then that will save whatever you have on this canvas to wherever. And then if something goes wrong, you can go back to that. So like, that's also good if you're gonna try something new where you're like, I wonder if I do this crazy shading because you can only undo a certain amount of times. Um, and there's no layers as far as I know. So you just, you just go for it. Now uh, here are the texture painting tools. Uh, this is just your paint, you know, just draw. And uh, drawing here and drawing here, they both apply to your model simultaneously. So that's good to know. Uh, I don't use soften. I think it like blurs lines. You can play with these. The only ones that I really use are draw and fill. And fill is what you would expect where it just fills it completely with color. Now, here's some cool stuff that you can do. So you've got all of these options. Mix is just paint, whatever. Multiply uh, makes things darker and screen makes things lighter. Those are the three that I use. All right, and if your, your stuff is still shiny, make sure you go to material mode. Um, I'm gonna delete this light or just move it out of the way. Okay, so I'm doing this with a tablet. Uh, if you do any sort of game development, 3D art, uh, 2D art, I highly, highly recommend you get a tablet. You can do this with a mouse, but just know that I'm doing it with a tablet. Um, so this will happen sometimes. I'm not in texture paint mode anymore, even though I'm on the texture paint tab. If that ever happens, select your model, click on a different tab, and then go back into it, and you should, you should be okay now. So as you saw, you can start painting. What I like to do immediately is, uh, so this is paint and this is fill. They're really the only two that I use. I like to immediately just fill my whole, whoops, fill my whole model with white. So that way on here, I can see what I'm doing because when you paint on either one, it applies to both, which you'll see in a minute. Um, by the way, this, this uh, does not represent the correct color that is used in the game for blitz balls. So we're gonna go for like a, kinda like this color. And now we're just gonna copy this design. Okay, and using your bracket keys will shrink and uh, make your, your brush bigger. And as you can see here, if I go lightly with my tablet, it sort of paints it on. And if I push really hard, the color's a lot deeper. If you want to turn that off and you just want solid color, which I recommend for your foundation, uncheck this, this is for pen pressure. And now no matter how soft or hard I go, it will, it will do that. You can also do the same for radius. So if I do it softly and then hard and then soft, uh, you can see there's different variations. Although Blender's a little finicky with it, so just let's try that out so we can see and I can show you. All right, so we're doing this little swoop up here. here and don't be afraid to do things because you can always erase it um, you're not actually erasing it but you'll like you know go over it with with white or whatever all 
All right, that's not like <laughs> the best, but it's a starter. Now, if you'll notice when I turn, I've missed some spots, things are weird. That's why I recommend turning off the strength thing because you want all your foundation to match as a color base because you want it to be all the same color. And now we just gotta kind of keep going around the entire ball like this. Um, I would just kind of match it on the other side and make it look exactly the same. I find this incredibly relaxing. Whoops. <laughs> Never mind. It's very stressful. Um, it's very relaxing because it's like it's like a coloring book, but in 3D, and it's your own creation. And you can do this for characters. You can do this for literally anything. Okay, so now we've got this this great divide, and you can see it doesn't really line up, but we're gonna we're gonna make it line up. So what we're gonna do is do this. Do 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 do. do. All right. And if we want to smooth this out a bit, we could just like do that. It's got a very free flowing design, which is one of the reasons I chose it for this because it's got a lot of room for you to make errors that are actually just happy accidents. Like that, just, you know, very nicely make it match up. And I know it doesn't look that impressive right now, but you'll see it will. And then from there, you've got your, your foundation, which is a great starting point. And then we can get into the fun sort of details and little tricks that you can do with texture painting. And I'm not the best 2D artist, so there's gonna be some of you that are probably gonna be way better at this than I am. Okay, so here, you see this little white triangle? Um, here, I can cover that with blue here because of that soft edge, it's a little, like it doesn't match up properly. Um, that's where I would turn on strength. Oops. Hmm, yeah, it's still. All right, so I can try to close off that edge, but we still got that little white spot there. So selecting your color, go down to the eyedropper and pick here. And then we're going to, whoa. Okay, never mind. Oh, actually, you know what? Pick it from here instead. Better that way. There we go. Yeah, you're going to be going back and forth a lot when you're texture painting for little things like that, like this little white part up here. Just There we go. Okay, let's continue. Okay, so for now, um, I'm just gonna say, like, cool, we got a blitz ball, um, but we don't have a blitz ball. It's still pretty early on, but that's okay. Uh, what we're going to do next is add the lettering. Um, this is gonna be tricky because it's like, sort of, it's font and it's weird font and you have to hand write it, so um, just take your time with it. Now, for something like this, you just want to do it in one go, and if it's bad, just hit Control Z and try it again. So, like this B. Okay. <laughs> and on top of that, it's at a slant. Could I have made this any more difficult? But this is great for learning, because if you can do stuff like this, other things will be much easier. See, it's already lot, not looking too bad. We got this. Okay, so you don't want to draw at an angle too much because you can get stretching like that, which is not good. So try to keep your model rotated to wherever it is that you are doing your work. All right, now you'll see that because I zoomed in, it made it smaller, so now I have to go over it again. That's all right. And you may be wondering, Hey Kai, how come you're not shading in the shadows? How come you're not making these parts darker? Well, because the shadows are going to go on top of this. 
and uh, we'll, we'll get there. Just just be patient. It's okay. Um, I don't know if it says Blitzball on both sides, but just for the sake of our sanity, we're going to say it doesn't. Now, uh, I'm going to save this in case I mess up, which is always good to do. Uh, so I'm just going to save it as whatever, uh, Blitzball base. And that way, if things go really wrong, Blender crashes, which never happens, thankfully, or you just do a really bad job, you can just reload the base and not have to worry about it. Because now we're going to paint the shadows and the lighting, all that stuff, and if that goes wrong, it's just going to be too much of a mess to clean up. So the way that I would paint shadows, set your... Um, I wouldn't do full black, I would do like a kind of like a dark gray. We're going to set it to multiply and here's a cool trick. Um, and this only works with the tablet, but if you set your strength to really low, like let's say like, yeah, 0 0.12, whatever. Now, um, this is where I actually want to see the shadows so I can get a sense of what I'm doing. But if I start going around first it doesn't look like you're doing anything but the more you do it now you see those shadows showing up very nice right so you can see there it's already adding a lot of depth and if I make it bigger um, you know you can kind of just go around and Do that so there you can see that that part's already protruding now here's the cool thing set this to screen and then set it to a lighter color um, and it does the opposite so if I start going over it like that uh, this is hard because it's already white but you can see that it you know it lightens it so this is a, a this is essentially how I would recommend you add lighting and shadows to anything that you texture paint. So we're just going to keep going around and doing the same thing. It is really hard to see where these like fake bumps are. But that's all right. We got this. So I'm just going to go around the whole model and just kind of do general circles of where the bumps should be so that I can have a reference. So if you're looking at this and you're thinking, oh, this is so tedious, this is so like boring or uh, that's 3D art. Uh, I recommend when you do stuff like this, like that's your time to turn on some music, put on a TV show, do something where you can do this while also enjoying something else and it makes it a lot more palatable of an experience because then you're not stressed out, you're just like do do do. For me, it's a great time to catch up on YouTube videos that I've been wanting to watch, music I've been wanting to check out, TV shows that I haven't gotten around to, you know, that old cartoon or anime from my childhood that brings me nostalgia, whatever. But remember, you're, you're making art, you're making 3D stuff. This is exciting, this is fun, this is something that you've wanted to do, because otherwise you wouldn't be learning this skill if you didn't have an interest in it. And if you ever get to the point where you are just really like not having a good time, your shoulders hurt, you're just annoyed, take a break. Go make yourself a drink, go for a little walk, go have some personal time, you know what I mean? And then come back to it. Nothing, nothing wrong with that. All right, from what I can see, it looks like I've pretty much covered the whole model. So we're gonna switch back to shaded mode. Okay, and now, the real fun begins. This is where you're gonna really, really start shaping spheres that aren't really there, or bumps, I mean. So once you're gonna keep going over, you're gonna try to keep the circle shape, but don't go too dark. And then by making a just a lighter shadow around. You're kind of blending the shading together. And now from far away in your video game, that's gonna be really well defined. And uh, you can start doing all the shading at once. I would just do one thing at a time. 
Now if you really, really want to define, shrink this down, and you could just go around like this. But I think for something like this, that might be overkill. So what you could do is like do a line there and then kind of do one down here. And you'll see that like just having those two lines kind of does all the work for you and that way you don't have to go around the entire thing every time. And again, I'm not, I'm not a good artist, like 2D artist, trust me. Which is why I know that you can do this. Because 3D art doesn't really require artistic skill as much as technical skill in my opinion. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do what I said. I'm gonna put on some YouTube and enjoy this time lapse of me working on this. That took forever. Um, I'm gonna save this, that's our shading. Now that's saved, so again, if anything goes wrong, we're good. And now we're gonna go to screen and we're going to just add some highlights around each one of these. I'm gonna turn the strength back up because we want it to be super bright. And basically this is just like, well, you know what, let's just set it to mix. Hmm. This is hard because it's already white. I can't make it any more white. So instead, we're going to make it a little bit yellow. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, so another tip. Don't use pure white. <laughs> start, start with a gray and, and build it. But what we can do is lighten the, the blue, and that will kind of help sell it, sort of like it did up here. Turn the strength back down. Yeah, that works. Okay. See how that makes it look a little shiny? Which is what we want. Cool. And again, just go all the way around. Basically, we're just aiming for. Uh, any spheres with blue parts in them now. And this is just a really nice way to give things a lot of dimension in your games. Uh, because we can't have physical lighting in certain games, especially with this art style. Or maybe you, you don't want to, you know, do realistic rendering. So, you know, if you're doing like a mobile game or something like that, this is perfect. Yeah, see that 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 works a lot better. Cool. I'm happy. Okay. Okay, and there you go. That's how you hand paint things. Again, before you do anything, save it as your final texture. So let's say blitz ball final. You can call it whatever you want. I'm just doing this for the tutorial. But now that we did that, so we go back to modeling. Uh, we do other stuff. Let's say it disappears. So you're working. Oh my god, my texture's gone. Oh no So now you're gonna go to open Navigate to wherever it's saved Blitzball final and then reload it. You're good. It's saved Awesome, and now that texture is ready to go directly into your game engine of choice and That is how you hand texture paint things in blender. Uh, I hope that was clear. I hope that that was something that you could do and you don't have to do a blitz ball you can do it with anything but i hope that this helps and uh, if you like this video please subscribe and leave a comment if you have any questions i will try to make more tutorials i'm only mainly on my gaming channel and it's just i i have so many things planned for, for you guys to to help you learn but one thing at a time so uh thanks for watching and have fun texture painting